Hey Abundant Parents, it's Leah. In this video, Delaney with Craftsman and Apprentice teaches us all about creating creative spaces for our children using what feels good for us and what's gonna flow for kids. Join us as she takes you on a tour through Craftsman and Apprentice as she points out what works so effectively for them in their workshop. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos, please hit the bell. I post a new video at least once a week, sometimes more. So by hitting the bell, you'll be notified when I post new videos. Hey, we thought we'd show you a little bit behind the scenes of our workshop and give you some ideas for creative ways of organizing spaces. I find that you should match your child's play spaces to your own aesthetics, and me, personally, I love vintage. So this is our toddler space and where we also store all our paints. We have child-sized brooms so that the kids can help clean up, access to safety equipment and supplies, and these kind of environments can change based on what your child is interested in. But something that you find aesthetically interesting as well as your kids is super important. Over here we have access to some supplies that we use on a really consistent basis. And I find that um, utilizing a variety of containers is super important. Um, and it helps to activate the, the materials in the spaces. So, you know, being able to pull jars off the shelf when we want to just give them access. So, you know, we don't keep tiny beads on the ground floor, right? But um, we still are able to use uh, those just higher up so that an adult can activate those if a child wants them. Using real materials for play is super important. So instead of wooden blocks, we have bricks. Those are the cutest little bricks I've ever seen. It pays to be married to a mason. <laughs> uh, a little messier than I like, but this is our, um, our workbench area. And so kids as young as nine or 10 can train to use the bandsaws and the drill presses. They just have to go through a safety check and we just kind of sign them off and make sure that they're utilizing the materials and the tools safely. Do they have to prove that they can make a wooden mustache? Yeah, this is uh, handmade by a 12 year old. He made mustaches for every tool we have. Um, one thing that I love is to have headphones available for kids, especially if your child is sensory, um, has sensory needs. Headphones are amazing and they also help direct uh, children's attention. So if they're highly distracted or loud sounds bother them like a wood chipper outside, they can throw on headphones and um, it really just helps them focus their attention. And they're like a dollar at the dollar store. Over here, we are big fans of clear plastic bins. Uh, that way we can find all the materials. If you have readers, then you can label the bins. I like the old school um, label makers. They're just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than a label maker, but all of our bins downstairs are just labeled with regular label bins. But this way, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. And what we do to maintain these is uh, we have the kids on a regular basis just sort the bins um, as part of their cleanup routine. So, hey, check and see. Do we have pom-poms in the pom-pom bins? Are all the fabric scissors in the fabric scissor bins? It also helps them just develop their organizational skills and it's on them to help keep their spaces clean. That's the same practice we have for if we ask our kids to keep their rooms tidy, but they actually have to learn what that means. So same thing with a creative space. Like, what does it mean to keep this organized and safe? So one way we help uh, create provocations for kids is we'll create tinker trays. So pulling materials from some of the bin areas that you saw before, but just giving them limited access to uh, smaller amounts of the materials helps them to kind of um, conserve materials, but also just self-select uh, smaller bits for whatever their collage or work might be. And these bins are kind of constantly changing. And we call this the studio side, and this is also our retail store. So we use this smaller workshop environment for workshops with older kids and adults. Uh, so just a smaller, a little bit more intimate area. Uh, a lot of like paper and fiber work happens over here. So like weaving, basketry, um, printmaking, things like that. And then on this side, we have a small retail store where we stock um, craft kits, and we also have our shoebox crafts where you can come stock it full of some of those open-ended creative build play tools that we were talking about. Hot glue guns, safety glasses, some simple tools and materials. 
Uh, you can even buy bags of scrap wood or wheel bases. Mm, those are great. Things that just kind of help activate that play. You can even use the shoebox as a provocation if you want to make a diorama. Delaney was a guest on the Abundant Parent Community Workshops. To catch the workshops, go to theabundantparent.com and click on the membership link. Thank you so much. Wishing you a day full of light, love, and abundance.